What's up guys? My name is Chelsea Seaburn. Welcome to my APA Made Easy video series, where today I'm gonna show you how to set up the basic formatting for an APA student paper using Microsoft Word. Not only that, I'm gonna show you how to save it as a template on your computer, so you only have to set up your title page general formatting one time. Now, two quick notes. If you're using Google Docs, I created this exact same video. You can find a link to that in the description below. And speaking of links, I do have a free downloadable template on APA formatting, which you can find down there as well. Okay, so the way this tutorial is going to work is that we have the completed paper on the left hand side of the screen, and we're going to be building out the APA formatting on the right. So what we're going to start with is our general formatting, starting with our margins. So per APA formatting, your entire paper should have a one inch margin around all four signs. The good news is that this is the default setting in Microsoft Word. If you want to verify that, come up here to the rule bar, go to layout, and then you can see margins here, the drop down, it is automatically on normal. Where the first official general formatting we're going to set is our line spacing. So our entire document needs to be double spaced. To set this, you're going to again come up here to the rule bar, go to paragraph, select line spacing options in which it's as simple as hitting 2.0. Now, do be sure to go back and make sure that if the remove space after paragraph is showing, you want to go ahead and click that so there's no extra lines when you hit enter throughout your document. The next thing you're going to do is add a page number to your title page. My favorite way to do this is go ahead and double click in the header window. As you can see, that just populated our option to edit in which we have our page number drop down menu right here. You want to make sure to select top of page and then add the page number in the right hand corner like you see it is there. Now, before we click out, we're not quite finished. You want to make sure to highlight that number so that way you can change the font size and type to match the rest of your document. We're going to change this to Times New Roman. 12 point because that tends to be the universally accepted font size and type for APA formatting. Once that's finished, it's as simple as double clicking anywhere on your paper. And now you can see our page number is set. Speaking of font, let's go ahead and set that up for the rest of our document. To do so, you want to select the font drop down menu here in our rule bar. Go ahead and change Calibri to Times New Roman, and we're going to set it at a size 12. But that officially concludes the general formatting in which now we can move on to typing out the elements on our title page. The first thing you want to do is center your cursor, come up here to paragraph, select, select the centering option, and then I recommend hitting enter roughly five or six times to bring your cursor down to the middle of your paper. From there, you're going to start by typing out the title. As you can see, it is in bold face font, so you can come up to font, select bold. A shortcut is also hitting command B or control B, depending on if you're using a Mac or a PC. I'm going to go ahead and paste in our title right here. As a rule of thumb, a good title is a handful of keywords that captures the essence of your paper. If you want to include a subtitle, go ahead and type it out directly below your main title like you see it is there. Although we don't have one, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that, in which now we're going to move on to including our our name. So to include your name element, you want to hit enter twice. So one, two, and then you're going to type out your name like you see it is here on the left, where it's the first name, middle initial, followed by our last name. Now do note that the font is no longer bolded as it won't be for the rest of the elements on our title page. The next element you want to include is your affiliation line. And so this is going to be composed of two different things. First, your department into your university. The department might sound a little confusing, but it's simply the department in which you're getting your degree under. So I got a business degree, therefore mine is the Department of Business, and then my university was John F. Kennedy University. Next, you want to include your course information. This also is composed of two different things. It's going to be your course code, followed by a colon, and then the name of your course. If you, you're not sure what the course code is, you can usually find it physically on the outside of the door or if you're taking online classes in your syllabus or somewhere in your online portal. 
Next up, you want to include your professor's name. And so my only note here is that you want to follow the same naming convention that they use to refer to themselves. So if it's doctor, professor, PhD, however they type out their name in your course material is exactly how you want to include it on your paper. And that leads us right into the final element for our title page, which is the due date for your assignment. For this, you simply want to format it the way that you would format a date in the country you live in. But with that, our title page is good to go. Now let's move on to formatting the main body and the reference list. And the easiest thing that I recommend doing is you want to insert a page break directly after the last element on your title page. And so to do that, make sure your cursor is flush against the last portion of that. Go up here to insert, select pages, and then insert page break. What that's going to do is that brings your cursor to the top of your second page. This is going to freeze the formatting on the title page and make your life super easy. So from here, we're going to actually copy our title and paste that here at the top because that's going to signify the introduction starting our main body. Per APA 7th edition, they no longer want you to type out the word introduction. So with that, we're now ready to start writing the main body in our paper. Now from here, I recommend repeating this process and inserting another page break to format your reference list. So again, bring your cursor flush to the end of that title go to pages, insert page break, and then now we can title our reference list with the phrase references. Do note how it's centered and bolded as this is APA's standard for starting your reference list. So you can understand why I recommend setting in the page breaks. For example, let's go back to our main body and let's, let's add some of the content for our paper. So we've started writing Coming back down to our reference list, notice how it's frozen in place. That way your reference list is always going to be on the last page, so you're free to add edit references as you're typing out your paper. Now we're not quite finished with the formatting for our reference page. The next thing you want to do is set the hanging indent. And so the first thing is you want to bring your cursor back over to the left hand side of your screen. And then from there, using the line spacing drop down menu, you want to select like line spacing options. Here you will see the indentation features in the center in which you want to select special, change it from none to hanging, and then ensure that it's hanging by 0.5 inch. From there, select OK, and then now your hanging indent should be set. So just to put this to the test, here I am typing out a full reference list entry. As you can see, when I fill up that first entire line and my cursor goes to the next, it is indented inward that half inch, which is per APA standards. Now, before we move on, I do have one other life-saving trick I'd like to show you. So while our hanging indent is set for our paper, if you were to copy and paste a reference from somewhere else, the formatting might be a little off. And so it's important to know how to fix this. The easiest way to do this is you would highlight that reference and then use the ruler to set the hanging indent. Notice my cursor is hovering over that middle caret for the hanging indent. If I hold that and drag it in that half inch, there we go, my hanging indent is fixed. But with that, our formatting is finished. We're going to go ahead and save this as a template. So you only have to create this document this one time. And so to do this in Microsoft Word, go ahead and come up here to File, select Save As. You're going to find a location on your computer. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to find my location. There we go. You're going to give your template a name. I recommend something simple, say title page template, select save. And then now you have a reusable template to open this and edit it at any time. So you can see how it works. Let's say we're closing out these documents. We're finished writing our paper. A few weeks goes by and we're ready to write our next paper. We would go to that location where we saved our template. We're going to open this. 
and then it's gonna open up that document. And from here, we're gonna change the elements on our paper to match our new writing assignment. And then when you're finished, you would go through the process of saving this as a traditional Word document. By the way, if you found this helpful and you need help with APA formatting in terms of referencing and citing, I'm giving you access to a free on-demand webinar where I walk you through the entire process of creating those reference list entries. What's really nice is I do give you guys a workbook where we have a section and we work through some practice problems together. If you'd like to learn more about that, be sure to check out the link in the description below. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.